slides everyone and then we'll go into the live demo um slides sort of set the table for for what we're going to cover here so so operational challenges in public cloud right so um one of the first challenges is, is this evidentiary data right we talked about um this before it's it's the burden of proof right the burden of proof is always on you uh as an operator of the uh, or consumer of a uh, public cloud and it's and it's your job to prove that there's issues right and you know things can be very limited with the native approaches and so what ends up happening is um you know sap is slow you call your service provider you set open up a ticket and um you know you're using you're having this uh, idea of you know, for some reason, users and transactions and TCOs are coming back slow or transaction times are, are coming back slow, but you hand that to a service provider, um, they're not going to know what to do with it. And you haven't made their life easy to easier to go investigate, right? Even if you tell them where your Fiori is, where your ABOP is, where your HANA is, um, you know, it just just saying, oh, it's slow, or it looks like it's slow, or there's a perception of slow, uh, really becomes a challenge because you know you don't have data other than maybe transaction codes and slowness from the actual app, but you don't know if it's the app, you don't know if it's you know the the a basis you know problem, a, a network problem, or a Red Hat Linux problem, or just connectivity from whoever is executing that transaction, if it's over some VPN or some, you know, uh, location that has a, has a large latency, you know, it's hard to kind of break that up, even if you know the source and destination, right? So it still takes time to find the source and destination and then, and then result and then try to figure out where in that source to destination path, uh, the, the slowness occurs, right? So that that's really the first problem. It's also unfamiliar tool sets, right? So, you know, being able to do some of the things you're used to on prem, like ping, packet capture, trace route, all of those things that you're used to on prem is, you know, those familiar tools are very lack, very much lacking in the cloud, right? It's a big, a lot of hoops you have to jump through to get um, just a packet capture set up, right? Um, so, unfamiliar tool sets can certainly stretch the time it takes to uh to actually troubleshoot um black boxes right L limited visibility so cloud native constructs you know you, you're 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 on the ui you're clicking around but it has very limited uh visibility into logs the current state the route table you know you're looking at a subnet route table and it tells you the next hop but you you know it goes into some other device like a tgw or or something like that you don't know if it's you know if it's coming back out if it's going to the next hop if it's getting dropped internally that type of limited visibility really you know uh, constrains you and then agility right um infrastructure as code being able to create support issues you know it's 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 a problem when you start developing and and you're trying to automate that but you're using things like in a handcrafted way um and then as shazad said uh, you know a vpc a vnet is very flat right it's very flat everything can talk to everything and it's very hard to create any type of hierarchy and insert next gen services insert any type of secure security control or visibility and then given the complexities, your support teams, your frontline support teams don't have the, the skills that they're used to on-prem. So what ends up happening is the, the, the senior network engineers really have to get pulled into tier one issues, right? And that, that's kind of flipped around when it was on-prem because on-prem you had, you know, the switches and the routers and the networking and the firewalls, you had direct access to them. In the cloud, you don't. Right. So that's where, um, you know, your tier threes essentially become tier ones. And then scaling, 
you know, being able to scale is really a hard problem to solve. And, um, you know, and the, and it's very hard to troubleshoot where things are going, you know, where, where things are going to where, especially when you have things scaling out, uh, you need to be able to track packet drops, packet flows, you know, hop by hop, that type of thing. Those solutions and ways of solving problems still remain the same. So again, you talk about a NetOps guy, a SecOps guy, um, you know, you have to go to the three different portals, depending on if you're in one cloud or multiple clouds, right, to understand those constructs. But with Aviatrix, you know, deploying and operating is very simple. The controller is a, is a multilingual controller and Terraform is a simple um, way to actually deploy this infrastructure. And then with that, operating it across the cloud centrally in one place. So just for example, the operational features of, of the controller and of the of GOAT pilot, um, there's a lot here. You know, there's there's a lot of features, a lot of visibility into and ways of looking at and troubleshooting and understanding your infrastructure. Right. So if you look at App IQ, um, just as an example, and I'm going to go through this in a little bit and show you the real world example. But if you would do this, um, you know, without Aviatrix, you would essentially need to look at 25 data points if you were looking at connectivity between one VPC and another, right? You have to go and find all the source information, all of the infrastructure associated with that source information, all of the destination, and then you have to flip it on its head for the return traffic, right? So you may be able to troubleshoot from source to destination, but then you have to do the reverse. And depending on the infrastructure that's in between, those can be either stateful or stateless, right? So that throws a, a monkey wrench into things as well. Um, obviously, giving you familiar troubleshooting tools and giving you an ability to do packet captures and connectivity and ping and trace route and these types of things really becomes important. So let's go, I'm going to share my screen to kind of walk through a quick demo. Mm -hmm. All right, so, so there's two sort of components or two things I wanted to show you is one um, is the SAP specific services, right? So, you know, we talk about how do things connect from a source to a destination? And what we have built into the platform is our ability to discover service instances and the services, the SAP services they're running, as well as the ports themselves. So if I look at these individual external resources, or I look at a specific platform or instance itself, you can see that there could be multiple services, multiple ports running on these different services, right? So if I wanted to say, for example, look at the communication and say, I'm gonna, this, this ABOP production uh, machine running a NetWeaver service, I wanna look at, um, I wanna look at a specific HANA instance here. So let's just say, for example, I don't know, I have a couple HANA instances running here. Uh, let's just say HANA is this one. So in this case, I have a Bob talking to HANA over this specific port. This specific port is traffic that has been found as a discovered SAP service. So it automatically fills in the port when you look at the source to destination, when the source is trying to talk to that destination. Now, say, for example, you get a call and say this, you know, is slow or this is not connecting or there's some problem, right? So simply by selecting the source, selecting the destination based on a discovered port over a private I over the private IP for all protocols, you can run app IQ to kind of analyze this. Now, looking at this, I know this actually is is going to be a AWS to Azure communication because of the way this is labeled. Um, and this, you know, this, I know you don't necessarily have a BOP in one cloud and HANA in another, um, but just for demonstration purposes, this will just show you what that connectivity looks like. So this could be, you know, Fiori to a BOP, a BOP to HANA, um, third party services connecting into a BOP, you know, so there's a lot here. Uh, there's a lot of ways to kind of define that. So this is, this first gives you 
that connectivity. And as I suspected, this was in um, AWS and Azure. And so what you can do initially is look at the overall latencies between these two. This is the network infrastructure, the gateways between Azure in one region, Azure East US to AWS East US one, right? And so this is the overall latency hop by hop between those. You can look at what those look like per gateway broken down here. And then you could look at the infrastructure between the source and the destination, right? So remember we talked about black boxes and you know when you use cloud native infrastructure to connect these two together, the, you have these black boxes. With this, the, the, the curtain is, is unveiled, you know, you're unveiling you know, what's happening behind the scenes and you're actually looking at the metrics, the network metrics for the infrastructure between the source and the destination. So you can look at min max, you can look at, you know, all sorts of information about the infrastructure, the packet rates, the packet transmits, the receives. In AWS, if you have the PPS limit exceeds, transmit rates, errors, packet drops, all of this information you could see. Then you could also see the actual total bandwidth used between the source and destination, as well as uh, the total bandwidth for the destination and for the source. Now, in this case, there's no flow traffic because, you know, for my HANA instances, there's nothing between an ABOP in Azure talking to HANA in, in AWS because they're, they're not part of the same technical system. But you get the idea. You see that the network ACL is here. We're able to then evaluate the connectivity and see if it's possible. So you have the ACL here that's validating that. You have the route table, which tells me there's a route. There's a security group that tells me the security group is allowing it. The spoke gateway route table, then the actual transit route table. Then on the other side at the destination, from here, you can look at the, the actual um, route table in, in Azure, right? And then you could look at the security group and then you could look at the route table as well. So here you're able to very quickly and then export to PDF the communication between this source and this destination, right? With these discovered instances. And, and that's really, as you start talking about Fiori to ABOP, ABOP to HANA, you notice too, you can do this for external resources. These could be public addresses. These could be, you know, coming IPs coming in from external services uh, into your environment. These could be, um, Anything that a virtual machine is there that you can then uh, find that is using SAP discovered services. So that's the first thing is, is flight path. And that's simple A to B, can it connect on what port? And you know this is simple starting off with troubleshooting, right? The second is what's called intelligent cloud analytics, and this is sort of phase two of of what we've uh, what we're what we've built out that that measures health and latency. So when you start talking about why is SAP slow, you know the first thing we want to look at is measuring whether this is um, you know if this is latency driven or if this is because of packet drops or packet errors. You have to start somewhere and it starts with understanding and building a view of that application. So you talk about the, the, the web app DB, you talk about those three components maybe being in the same managed view, and then you can actually create relationships between them and first and decide latency and look at latencies between them. Has latencies changed? Um, you know, and you can go in and essentially look at say um, prod HANA, you know, has that latency change between it and the firewall, right? Has latency changed between Fiori? Has latency changed to say your on-prem or your, your uh, you know, your remote users that are coming in say from London. So from London, I'm connecting into my BTP Fiori landing zone and I have 85 milliseconds, has that changed, right? So you're able to look in a time series may connectivity connection latencies hop by hop between your infrastructure, 
right? You can then look at your traffic, your top traffic sent, your top traffic received, the amount of data, and then any security posture you have. If you have any distributed firewall rules, if you've set up any type of segmented domains, are there any active threats with well-known bad actors? You're able to look at that at a per, um, per group and that group, smart group, you know, you can then assess, are there any anomalies, any th egress FQDN rules that it hit? So per group, you can then decide what is hit, what, what rules are being, uh, in, you know, um, are being affected, are, am I being attacked, these types of things. So by taking what we call smart groups and being able to create groups, these smart groups into views, you're able to then identify applications and identify application behavior look at latencies as well as any as well as traffic and security events that are associated with those views so if i go here and i say okay i want to create a new view and i'm going to call this azure uh, sap and the smart groups i'm going to create are azure fiori azure abop azure hana and azure transit FireNet, which is the hub. And that's pretty much it. So from here, I can then see that new view here. And essentially, that's what I've created. I've now created an Azure SAP environment. I'm able to see what that Azure SAP environment looks like. I'm able to look at latencies between Fiori and Abop and HANA and the hubs between them. And all the connectivity, I can then see what are my top traffic sent and receive the amount of traffic. I can then look at rules, domains, active threats, anomalies per application, per component of application. So Fiori, uh, Abop, Hana. So you're able to decouple or decompose those three um, three uh, uh, components to the overall application and start to look at latencies, tr tr connections, traffic. You can then look at threats. You can look at firewalls and rules, domains, all sorts of things now at a per application level. And that again is taking smart groups and the smart groups can be resources based on machines, based on tags. You know, I have some for various projects, pacemaker, uh, regions, accounts, you're able to create these smart groups across instances or across applications, siders, any sort of way, and then taking those groups and creating an associative relationship with them in this intelligent cloud analytics, which creates these views, which are a group of smart groups viewed together and showing their relationships amongst between them. So I think um, you know, that's, I think that's one of the main things we want to show that is, you know, very SAP specific, obviously talking about and discovering these in SAP instances and the services, being able to show how they connect, if they connect and all, all the infrastructure related to it. And then longer term being able to see, is there trends in slowness and latency? Is there trends in threats? Are there trends in events going into the components of the application to show these, right? And that's really where intelligent cloud analytics um, can, can give you that visibility into the application and the components of them and how they're, what their relationships are. Um, I think, I think that was pretty much what I wanted to cover. Um, like I said, this was, this is the SAP specific part. You could see there's a ton of other things here, um, you know, with, with co-pilot and being able to have visibility into, um, your entire infrastructure, you know, airspace, which is the data plane, that ability to create a topology. Uh, you know, ha of having your HANA instances, your your AWS, your Azure, your GCP, your OCI environments. So there's a lot here. And I think if you're certainly interested in digging more into Copilot, digging into AppIQ, digging into SAP specific components of SAP, of, of 
of a co-pilot, then definitely let us know and we can help, uh, you know, give you a deeper demo, give you more, uh, give you more information about what this is and how it works. Um, but there's certainly a lot here and a lot of, again, taking back, you know, your, the visibility and control uh, that you're used to on-prem and being able to have that in the cloud and, and be able to manage it and um, secure it. Yeah, so I think a couple of things, important things to mention for SAP workload and when it comes to troubleshooting SAP scenarios is uh, first under topology, if you notice, uh, we have the smart gateways uh, that you can simply click on with the A symbol on it. And then um, on the right-hand side, bottom right, you will see the troubleshooting options, the familiar tool that uh, Luke was mentioning before. So you can click on the gateway and then you can say, okay, I want to diagnose uh, using ping or trace out and whatnot. So you can simply and quickly do that. Yeah. If you click on the, uh, look on the uh, gateways with the A, AVTX A symbol on it. Yeah, let me, uh, cause I know they just changed this a little bit ago. Yeah. So let's hop into say this one. So here. Yeah, so this is this is providing you all the the metric, the um, subnets, and all the other detail. Um, but if uh, if we were to click on this, for example, this one, or oh, the one with, with the letter, yeah, these these guys, these guys are AVTX. With those, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, and yeah. then diagonal. So exactly, yeah. Yeah, so there you have the ping, the trace path, interface stats, active sessions, uh, packet capture, all of that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And then uh, within the topology, you can also go back in time and replay the topology and see if something changed in your landscape. So that's a very quick and uh, easy way to diagnose a problem. If let's say you wake up early in the morning at 7 a.m. or 8 a.m. and someone told you that there was a problem last night or something, uh, you can quickly uh, go back and look at exactly what changed. Maybe it was the automation that kicked in or maybe there was a nightly process or monthly process that ran and it just uh, in, you know had some CPU spikes. Exactly, and as well as who changed. So you can you have a way yep. of auditing these events and then being able to uh, you know show the what changed over over a period of time. Yeah. No, that's a great point. And, um, yeah, and then there's a couple of other things uh, that we discussed during our uh, initial phase of the training, where we mentioned that the security is embedded into the data plane. And you can also create the policies there, like the network segmentation or micro segmentation policies, and you can see the distributed firewalling in action. So here you can create the intent and then apply it to different SAP HANA workload. And that's how you can actually protect without you dealing with the, the native constructs or changing those security groups or NSGs. And you can actually see your active traffic count. Like here I have it super simple, any to any. But yeah, you could look at actions. You could look at the policy monitor. We're actually also coming up with a scenario where if you would deploy a distributed firewall rule, it would say, based on that rule, this is what traffic would be impacted if you would implement it. So it's almost like an if then or if else scenario. So the if else scenario is obviously built into this already, but you can actually see the real data that would change as a result of that rule being enforced, right? So you could look at traffic counts and actually make sure, you know, you're you're not going to break something, or you have a clear understanding of of that uh, rule implementation. So, um, yeah, anomaly detection. There's there's a whole lot here uh, that we can go into with threats. Geo blocking, obviously, if you want to be very specific about countries that you want to block based on uh, those. So you can block certain countries. Uh, anomaly detection is all about behavioral analytics, right? It's about taking uh, an understanding of your current and then and then doing um, various uh, algorithms 
uh, to, to see if there's anomalies based on changes or rates of changes. And then threats. Um, I just spun up this environment, so there's probably not any threats. But in other environments, you have you could look at the actual threats over time and see, uh, you know, what what threats have are trying to access your system from our internally, uh, you know, deployed um, emerging threat database. So. Yeah, I mean, this is a great point you mentioned because uh, I know a lot of SAP customers, they have the ingress traffic coming in from outside, especially when they're connecting to SAP uh, Ariba or those type of SAP services. So the landing zone that we showed you on uh, our design and architecture diagrams, this is where your ingress traffic is coming in. And what in security, what you need to do, you need to create multiple um, security checkpoints or enforcement point because you have to follow the layered security model. So you have your next generation firewall obviously taking care of the uh, deep packet inspection, but for the incoming traffic coming from outside, if it is going through the data plane, the data plane will automatically detect those threats. And this is part and parcel of the architecture. So it doesn't matter if you're sitting in AWS or Azure and you don't know what service you need to turn on, uh, you don't have to worry about it because obviously, let's say if you're turning on the guard duty service from AWS, you have to pay for uh, for that service. And not only that, the guard duty will only detect the threat and won't do anything about it. But with the Aviatrix platform, what I know customers or MSPs are doing, they're basically using our embedded threat detection to not only detect those threats, but automatically block it with the with the policy model that things too is you can customize those threats. So even for zero day threats, and then you can apply those rules either in an append or prepend, and you can send alerts and alarms. So you can send them these things to like, you know, uh, to web hooks to say, um, you know, Splunk pager duty as well as Slack, right? I have an incoming stream of Slack messages here that, that show uh, you know, these that, that can show these events being sent as a webhook. So a lot here that you can integrate with 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 seams, SIEMs and other third parties, as well as uh, just something like a, a web a Slack webhook to just give you those notifications. So I think we have covered a lot. Um, obviously, like Luke mentioned, we have a lot more to showcase, like the the billing and costing, how to look into you, not only the CSP bill, but also the uh, the shared resources that you have deployed and how do you actually charge back and show back to your respective line of businesses or even to tenants. So if you uh, have any need, um, I can pretty much guarantee that we would have seen it. So if you have any requirement, if you want to see something part of the platform, which you believe or think is is missing, we can work with you. We can quickly build it uh, because our uh, development cycles are very, very short. They're not like MSP cycles where you have to wait years to get uh, something implemented in the CSP fabric. We can quickly um, you know, build a feature and provide you this, uh, the value add that you need for your business.